Well, this morning we wake up to another round of rocket attacks against Israeli citizens, Israeli retaliation, and news that the U.S. is moving a powerful naval armada into the Middle East to send a strong message to Muslim nations should they consider attacking Israel once again. Israel is at the front and center of end times biblical prophecy, yet a growing number of Christians are ignorant of its importance or God's promises to protect Israel, even in the midst of their rejection of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. While pastor and best-selling author Carl Gallops has studied the biblical prophecies in depth and written several books about the rise of false gods in these final days, culminating with the coming temporary reign of Antichrist. And he joins us this morning to discuss the tense situation in the Middle East and get a sneak peek at his newest book coming out, Gods of the Final Kingdom. Brother Carl, welcome back to Stand Up for the Truth. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you, David. <laughs> it's so good to be with you guys. Thanks. Well, Carl, we, we wake up this morning and we see a lot of news in the Middle East, hundreds of missiles launching down on Israel. Israel understandably responds. The Palestinians pull out their trump card of, oh, look, women and children are being killed. Uh, yeah. Same old, same old. I thought the U.N. years ago stepped in and was going to make sure that the uh, that the Palestine Liberation Authority no longer had rockets to attack Israel with. Well, actually, they did, Mike. So uh, I, I can't believe that they haven't kept yeah. the word. Can you guys? I mean, Shot. I mean, I mean, they've always been pro-Israel, and uh, so anyway, we need to dispense with the sarcasm, I guess, and move on to the reality. Listen, guys, here's how I look at it. Of course, I always pray for God's protection over Israel, the return to Israel. Listen, I, I want to make this clear to your listeners. I, I have to do this disclaimer every time. The Word of God does not say that we are to support every vile thing that comes out of Israel in the same way that we are supposed to support every vile thing that comes out of the United States or any other nation of the world in this fallen, depraved, perverse world. That's not the point of supporting Israel. It doesn't mean that we always have to support everything that drops off the mouth of Israeli leadership. Amen. That's not the point of supporting Israel. It doesn't mean that the culture of Israel, wrapped up in the political correctness of this world, where they have some of the largest gay parades, for example, in the world, it doesn't mean we're supposed to support that. That's not what it means biblically to support Israel. What it means is we are to support what God's word said that in the last days he would bring Israel back as a geographical political reality that would prove that he is God and the Bible is his only word. It would prove it to the nations, the Bible says. It would prove it to the world. It would prove it to the unbelieving world because God says, where has any other, quote, God ever done such a thing? Taken a nation that was not a nation, restored that nation after he had dispersed them and brought them back in the last days and foretold it ahead of time. Well, the answer, the question's rhetorical. The answer is obvious. No other, quote, God has ever done that. You'll not find anything like this in the Quran, for example, or the teachings of Buddha, or the teachings of the Hindu Vedas, or or Nostradamus, or the the astrology charts in your in your on the internet or in your newspaper. Only the Word of God foretells that in the last days, before the return of the Son of God, God would restore the geogra geographical political Israel situate them in the Middle East, they would be surrounded by nations that hated them, that wanted to destroy them, that political and spiritual intrigue would go to the last day before Jesus came. We are the only generation to see that happen, the only generation since 2,800 years ago when Israel fell to the nations and the prophecies began to point forward to the day in which Israel would be restored. We're now 70 years on the si other side of it. We're now just months on the other side of Jerusalem being restored as the rightful, lawful capital. And in the meantime, the nations are raging against Israel just as the Word of God said. Now, so not only was the Word of God clear that all of this was going to happen and for those reasons, but also because it would be a gathering place where God would bring the Jews from the world out of the nations into this geographical region where primarily 
they would begin to be reached for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is happening, guys. That is happening. So all of these prophecies are converging. And now we're watching this, 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 this coming tidal wave of anti-Semitism. It's actually not coming. It's already here. Proliferated pr largely by the worldwide information uh, communication instantaneous network called the Internet. And right in the midst of it, it is a continual upheaval in the Middle East, the calling for the complete annihilation and destruction of Israel by 57 Muslim nations and, and other parts of the world that are anti-Semitic, even a large population of the United States. And so as goes these prophecies, guys, as goes the nation of Israel, goes the marching forward of the prophetic word of God. Yes, the United Nations did some time back say that this should never happen, but you know, the United Nations is always always has a wink wink when it comes to Israel. So I'm always praying for God's hand on them. I'm always praying for the peace of, of, of God's people as they have resettled that revenant nation, that prophetically revenant nation of Israel. But also I just understand the word of God. These are convergent signs of the profoundly prophetic times we're living in. We're living now in the most prophetic times since the first coming of Jesus Christ. So, you know, I, I, I don't have any specific word from God as to what's going to happen literally tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. But I do know the word of God says that these prophecies are marching forward in a straight line and they all point to the soon return of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Does that help at all with some perspective? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Carl. Hey, uh, we just uh, heard this story come in yesterday where more than 600 rockets were fired at Israel from Gaza in less than 24 hours. The death toll is rising. I spoke to a Christian yesterday who believes that Israel deserves this because that's not their land, because <laughs> they are, you know, the old, they are occupiers. And so even though the media is not reporting this, the people that are aware of it kind of go, well, they're the Palestinians are just trying to get their land back. How do you respond to someone like that? Yeah, I respond to it all the time, and I could literally teach and preach for an hour on this. I won't. Don't panic. Uh, but but I could. So so if you would give me fifty five minutes, let me unpack it. No no. Let me give, let me give my short answer. But but truly, here's the answer. First of all. Um, I, and I mean, you, you guys and I, we've talked about this ad nauseum, so, but there are a lot of new listeners, always yes. new listeners to, yes. your, to your station, so I want to make sure they know. And plus, the ones that have been with you for the longest, let's just remind them and ourselves what the historical reality is, the biblical reality. First of all, this, uh, and I'm using air quotes, this Christian that says that Israel doesn't have access to the land— Listen, either he's not truly born again because the Holy Spirit wouldn't tell him that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not judging. I'm not judging him. I, I yeah. don't know the man. I'm just saying either he's not truly born again or he's just woefully misinformed and he has been drinking the Kool-Aid of the leftist. Actually, it's, it's, it's deep. It's spiritual. It's demonic, the spirit of our day. Now, so because the truth is, and the reason I can make such harsh statements about this fellow's statement is because the truth, the historical documented historical biblical truth is this first of all the word palestinian is a misnomer that word was invented by the roman empire in 70 a.d and then again really pushed forward in the uh, 100s a.d when when the romans were destroying the temple and and and, and waging basically war against the Isra israelis the jew the jews living in that land and driving them from the land and the Roman emperors uh, decided that, th that they would name that region the region of Palestine in the Roman Empire. Why? Because that word means literally land of the Philistines. They did that as a part of their psychological warfare, believing that no Jew would ever really want to come back to or settle in a land that was called the land of the Philistines. The, the word Philistines, that, that, that invokes fear and hatred among the Jews because that was their worst Old Testament biblical enemy, the Philistines, you know, like Goliath, for example. Uh, so, um, uh, so that's how the term Palestine or Palestinian came along. So, so I can remember growing up as a kid, 
you know, I mean, I was born in 1955. Israel was reborn in 1948. So even as a child, it was a brand new reborn nation, a prophetically reborn nation. But as I grew old enough into my teenage years and young adult years to study this and to understand what was really happening, I can remember the days when the news would come on and talk about the Palestinian Jews or the Palestinian uh, uh, Britons, or the Palestinian Arabs, or the Palestinian Muslims, or the Palestinian... Because see, the term Palestine was for anybody who settled and lived in that land. It was a region. That's like saying the American Jews, the American blacks, the American whites, the American Hispanics. We're all a part of America, so if you want to divide it down into ethnic groups, you just add the word America to it. So what has happened is that term Palestinian has been morphed into, um, instead of speaking of a region, now it's speaking almost like they're defining a race of yeah. people. Yes. And it's, it's just, it's absolutely historically ludicrous mm. and historically ignorant. But it has been a purposed, politically correct shift that the mainstream media pushed. I don't remember when they started it, probably in the 80s or 90s, and it has stuck, and we have raised a couple of generations since then that have been completely dumbed down. The truth is there's never, ever, ever since the beginning of recorded history, the Bible confirms it and historical records confirm it. There has never been a nation that occupied that area with walls and borders and peace treaties and kings and a uniformed military and a coinage and a heritage and a language that make up the things that we use to define a real nation. There's never been a nation that occupied that area in that way except for the nation of Israel. That area was occupied by various tribes in the same way the Americas were occupied by dozens of tribes of Native Americans or Indians. Um, it was occupied by the Egyptian Empire as a region that it controlled. Uh, but in fact, a lot of those tribes at one time were under the control of the Egyptian Empire. Uh, but, it, but even Egypt didn't divide it out into an, a separate nation of its own or even a state. It was simply a region. So the only nation that has ever existed there is the nation of Israel. So for the Arabs and the Muslims to call themselves Palestinians is historically ignorant. And for the Palestinian Muslims, and that's what they call themselves, to say that's our land, uh, it's our nation was there, that is an absolute lie. They can't point to borders and kings and uniform militaries and peace treaties and coinage and, and, and language and culture that has distinctively belonged only to them for thousands of years. They cannot. They cannot. Every time I challenge somebody who's, who claims, makes that claim, they go completely crazy trying to do it. And then they realize I'm right or history's right. And I'm just repeating the truth of history, and they're wrong. And then they get mad, and then they start calling me names. I'm a racist. I'm this. I'm that. Which yeah. proves I've won the argument when they start doing that. Exactly. So that's that's my short version. Let me hush for right now. But that whole premise is based upon absolute misinformation, out and out, out and out ignorance, or purposed lies. Well, Carl, here's where it's seeping into the spiritual realm. And last week, the New York Times had to retract a commentary saying Jesus was a Palestinian. And we're hearing professing that. Christians yep, yep. call Jesus a Palestinian yes. rather than a Jew. That's yeah. significant, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. And let me just say, there's a little bit of truth to that statement in that Jesus was born and lived and raised and ministered in the area that would later become known as Palestine. So he was he a regional, regional citizen of an empire that would later have a region called Palestine? Yes. So in that little teeny sense, he could be called a Palestinian, but only in the regional geographic designation, not as a race. So to say he was a Palestinian, not a Jew, now we're making the term Palestinian meaning a certain ethnic class or, or even racial class, which is an absolute, I've already, you know, went through the whole dialogue, it's, I mean monologue, it's an absolute 
historically ignorant statement to make. But what they do with that, though, guys, as you know, and your audience knows, because your audience is well-educated in these matters, and they listen to you. But, but for your new folks, what, what they do with that statement, what the New York Times and others like that did with that, is they went on to say that because uh, Jesus was taken to Egypt as a child, that he and his family were refugees and illegal immigrants. Of course, the historically ignorant statement is that they made, the truth is that Egypt was a part of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they just It's like me going from Florida to Alabama and being called an illegal immigrant. Uh, I, I, I'm not. I'm in the same empire. I'm in the same nation. I'm just crossing state lines. I'm crossing regional lines. So their whole argument just, I mean, God is making a mockery of them by, by, by having them open their mouths and insert their feet and then to be humiliated in, in, before the world for their historical ignorance and their political correctness that has run amok. Uh, the liberal mantra, don't confuse me with the facts. I've already made up my mind. Carl Gallup's exactly. our guest this morning. When we come on Stand Up for the Truth, when we come back, why is the American military weighing in? Gods of the final kingdom. There are things he still doesn't know. doesn't know.